Okay. Um, so here we go, guys. I'm starting directly into in the Welcome to the Writing Center screen. Um, I'm not going to show you how to start a new paper. I'm going to jump right into one of my saved papers. Um, so you can see we've kind of redesigned this screen just a tiny bit. It gives you a little bit more information, um, your paper title, who the owner is, your role within the paper and the course that that paper is associated with, as well as some additional um, data over here. Um, these are important. This lets you know that this is a shared paper. Um, we do have a lot of people who use the review functionality or have collaborators on their paper. And I think it's really helpful to see all of that information. I'm gonna jump into my demo paper here. So what I'm really gonna focus on today are the research lab books and how you can utilize those in preparing for you know, writing your paper. Um, I'm going to touch on how to customize some of the paper sections, um, like adding in an author note, keywords, abstract. Um, and then I'm going to focus a lot on your references, tables, figures, footnotes, appendices, and remind you of the check functionality and some of the settings. So this is really meant to be a little bit more focused on uh, maybe longer paper dissertations, etc. So to get started, let's jump over here to one of my favorite tools and maybe a little underutilized, the research lab book. Every paper in Academic Writer is going to contain this section here, the research lab book, and it's meant to help you through the research process from developing your idea through sort of that outline, you know, you want to plan out your research concept, if you have an annotated bibliography as an assignment, that's located here as well. And then um, if you are doing a little bit more advanced research, this can kind of help you describe your test and measures as well as track the flow of participants if you're conducting a study. So the develop my research idea is meant to help you generate ideas for your research concept. So it's gonna take you through a series of questions that will help you move from a broad topic to a, a more specific topic. So as you go through, you're expected to kind of fill in the boxes here based on the questions that you select. Um, you have four different options and each one gives you an example of what that that option is. So here I've selected, you know, please describe your research interests. And here's an example of what I might write. And so here, uh, this paper is focused on organizational change. So I started writing in this, in like maybe the concept of the paper. And as you go through, it's going to try to get you to focus a little bit more on detailing that topic. And then by the end of this, um, series of questions, you can export your notes as a Word file. So just to give you an idea of what that looks like, um, when you spit it out, it's going to have your generate ideas, identify topic, maybe develop the research question, and then it's going to help you narrow that down. Like, who are you talking about? What do you expect to have happen? Like, it's going to take you through all of these questions and give you the option to describe your expectations. So by the end of it, you should have a fully fleshed out research concept that you can export and maybe work with your faculty or a collaborator on, you know, getting started on the research. Um, I'm gonna move over to plan and track my research. So here is your virtual outline. Um, so you can go through and plan out your paper. We have some default options here for you, um, but these are always editable. So you can just hit the little pencil over here and you can change the name of this. Um, you can change the location. If you want, maybe a hypothesis isn't what you wanna state here. So you might change this to introduction. Um, and then you can save it by clicking here. And then you can always expand it by clicking on it. 
So here you can start writing in your ideas for that section. You can save, you can add additional notes. Um, this is my additional note and save your notes here. So it's a great way and it's a timestamp. So you can kind of go through and check how your progress is going. And then at the end of it, you can save your draft plan and then you can finalize it. And it's also exportable as a Word document. Again, meant for you to be able to take it out of the platform and send it to you know, your faculty or a colleague, um, just someone to kind of help you go through and edit your plan. Um, and then toggling over to the create an annotated bibliography. Um, oh, I did not save it. So it's giving me the option, reminding me there's something that you did not save. So yes, um, I'll stay and I'll click save, which is down here. We try to help rem remind people that uh, something has changed and you do want to save those changes. So the annotated bibliography is meant to help you format that for exporting to turn in. This is usually an assignment. Um, so what will happen is you can add references to your annotated bibliography, either from directly from psych info, or you can just search your references. So if I take that off, I want to add my reference library has 81. So I'm going to maybe narrow it down a little bit to what I want to add here. Um, so I will tick this box. I'm going to add it to the annotated bibliography. Um, another, just to point out here, you're not limited to just searching all of your references. If you know you have something tagged in your reference section, you can search specifically for that tag. You can search the notes field. Um, each reference has a notes field. Um, so you have options for searching those. And if you are searching psych info, we have the advanced search option below it. So it's pretty robust search. Um, here, I'm gonna add this to the annotated bibliography. Great, I can go back and start working on my annotations. There's a text box under each reference added, and it lets you know if this has been added to your paper reference list. Um, you can't delete a reference from your annotated bibliography if it is part of your paper reference list. So that's something to keep in mind. Um, and then as a preview, you can toggle over here and it gives you a visual of what your annotated bibliography is gonna look like. So again, you're not having to try to format the paper yourself. We're, we're doing that for you. And then you can focus on the content, content of your annotations. And then it, again, this is exportable. So if you click here right above it, you can preview and export. You can include your title page if this is an assignment. Um, and you can download it either by Word or PDF. Um, you can also change the order of it if that is something you need to do. So if you wanted it to be um, author Z to A, you can always change the order of it here. Um, so I'm gonna move on to the tests and measures. Um, again, any questions, please just drop them in the chat or the Q&A. Um, and we'll make sure to address those questions. So describe my test and measures. This is actually a really fun exercise. So um, you can do this in either paragraph mode or form mode. Um, and this is just gonna fill in the content for you. So um, here I selected paragraph mode and it's just prompting you for the information that should go here. So here, full name of the measure that I'm using for this paper. Um, it's just a way to kind of guide you through a good way to describe what you're doing for your, your experiment or your study. Um, and then at the end of it, you can save and review. You can switch to form mode if that's easier um, rather than paragraph mode and then if you do use the form mode, it lets you know up here that this will automatically create a paragraph um, that you can edit on the review screen. So I'm not sure, I don't know if it'll let me know. I do have to fill in content. So this is my study. 
um, tests. So just to kind of put some stuff in here, I'm just going to copy this. It's giving me an example beneath where I'm writing just to kind of let me know, hey, this is what you might expect to put in here. So again, it's telling me this is what would be expected in this field. Um, again, it makes it a lot easier just to give you a visual um, purpose of the measure. This is so great uh, to assess parenting. Oh, I like that the spell check works here, even in these fields. Um, so now if I save and review, um, it's building that paragraph for me. Um, and then when I finish, oh, uh, let me X that. do I want to save my changes? Yes. So now I have an extra uh, <clears throat> test and measure added to this, which I can export as Word or a PDF. I can go directly to print um, if need be, and then edit it if I want. So I have a few saved here now, um, which is great. Um, now moving on to the, oops, I clicked on the wrong button, track the flow of participants. Um, so I, I definitely don't have an advanced degree um, that would have involved me conducting a study that would include participants. So I kind of went through this as a test just to see what it would produce. Um, so as I save and continue, um, I started filling in all the content. So the population stage, what is the population for this study? And I just kind of copied what I saw here just to give me some data. Um, and as you go through, it's going to kind of get you to describe everything you did to prepare this study. So it, I found it awesome. And it does calculate your numbers for you. So that way, if you're if you accidentally put in the wrong number, it's going to let you know it's doing the math on the back end. And at the end, um, I did create a flow chart, which can be saved to your figures if this is something you're going to include in your paper. Um, I didn't make it all the way through um, to like the follow-up stage or the analysis stage, as this was just an example. But as you can see, as you're going through, it gives you options um, to add content to it. Um, I thought it was a great way to assist in building your flow of participants and to create a figure at the end of it that can kind of highlight how the study operated. So. Um, just another advanced tool that's kind of tucked into every paper in Academic Writer. Um, and then always double check over here on the related help um, because there are some additional sources over here that can help you. Um, like if I'm planning and tracking my research, there's a lot of extra information tucked over here that might help me um, with some of the questions going through this content. So there's a lot of information tucked in here. I can pick quantitative, I can pick qualitative research. It's gonna change the information that's presented to me. Um, if it's mixed methods, I'll also have some additional content over here to review. And that's just to help you remind you exactly what the purpose of these are. Does anyone have any questions about the research lab books? And hopefully I'm not talking too fast. Let me know. I will be happy to slow down. Okay, well, if nobody has any questions about this content, I'm going to close and return to the body of my paper. Um, when thinking about the title page, so this is a student paper that I have created, not a professional paper. But we do know that faculty will always have different requirements for a paper that you're turning in. Um, sometimes it'll be more advanced and that's fine. We wanted to make that an option available working within a student paper. So you can see here, this is the first page of my title page. All of the title pages in Academic Writer are, are forms that you fill out and then we're doing the formatting for you on the back end. Um, 
So I filled in this content, but my instructor might require a running head. That's where you will add that in. So, and then you can kind of put it in here. I can save and continue to authors. Um, I have one author listed, which is myself. This is me, but perhaps you're co-authoring. You can add in additional author information um, and it gives you the affiliation and everything beneath. Um, but there might be, you might need to put in an author note. So over here, you can see this is customized paper sections. Um, so within this, when I click on it, I can add in that author note if that's a requirement. Um, and it'll give me an additional form for me to fill out within the title page. I can also include an abstract in the keywords option. Oh, academic writer. I think it might be my computer this morning that is giving me a little bit of trouble. Um, I was opening, trying to add a file earlier and it just kept freezing. So if that happens, I apologize ahead of time. I'm fairly positive it is my computer and not academic writer. Um, so getting back to where I was, I just wanted to show you what the author note looked like. Um, it has a lot of options. So for you to fill in, um, just more than I actually even knew might be needed for something like this. So there are a lot of options if you wanted to put in acknowledgements here or um, disclosures you have, we've tried to include as much possible, as much, as many options as possible. Um, and then the same with the abstract and the keyword. So this just kind of opens it up and you can put this in here. I'm gonna, I've never noticed this. So you can put in, oh, this just kind of gives you a couple of different options to put it all together. So just reminding you, kind of guiding you through the process of creating an abstract. So what is your objective? What is your method, results, conclusions? These are all the aspects that you would want to include in the abstract. So academic writer is giving you either the option to just do your own, just remember that you're putting all that content in, or you can break it up into a, a structured format. So that way you can kind of detail each one separately. Um, and then again, always check the question mark just to see if there's additional information because this is giving you a little bit more detail about maybe what to include here, as well as pointing you back to like the quick guide or um, one of our tutorials and also a snippet from the publication manual. And then keywords again will provide, oh, well, do you wanna save our changes? No, thank you. Um, you can start adding keywords here. Um, maybe I would add library services, maybe that would be a good one. And then we'll start building the keywords. And if you're wondering, you know, why would I need keywords for this? Then this kind of gives you a little bit more information again with the related help. Um, and then you can always learn more down here. Does anyone have any questions on those features that I could answer really quick? Um, again, let me know if I'm going too fast. I am happy to slow down. Um, toggling over to the body of the paper, let me check. Um, so I did want to really quickly give you a brief overview of our version history and uh, the commenting features, because, you know, as you get into longer papers, you're probably going to have someone reviewing your paper. Um, you could be making edits to the paper. So if I click into version history, um, just as a reminder, the only person that can see the version history is the owner of the paper. So this is meant for the author of the paper. You are the owner, you'll have access to the version history. So you can explicitly save a version, um, but we also have an auto save feature. So if you've made a certain amount of changes to the paper um, as you're writing, it will auto save a version of that for you. And then just to click in here to give you an idea of what you're looking at, um, it highlights the changes to the paper. So you can look at the text around the change. 
So here you can see I've made a few changes here. I took out that um, citation. I changed here and it's kind of making it a little bit bigger so I can really see what has been changed, which is great. You can see in the text <clears throat> around the change, you can see the differences only. Um, so you don't have to see the, the paragraphs before it, or you can see the full text of your paper. <clears throat> and how those changes fit in. And then um, because I do have a collaborator added to this paper, I can't restore this version at this time. In order to restore a previous version, you would need to remove any reviewers or collaborators from your paper, um, but you can always add them back in. So that's not um, a big deal. You can just kind of take them off and then add them back in after you've restored a version. So to add a collaborator, you'll see the tab here above where you're writing. Um, and within this, you can add users. You can add them as either a reviewer which will give them read-only access to your paper where they can make comments, or you can add them as a collaborator. And this is meant more if you want to assign them a section for them to work on. So it's really meant more for group, group work, um, but if that's your assignment, you can kind of add your group to the paper, um, and then you can start assigning sections to them. So you can see here that I've assigned this section to my colleague, I can revoke that section. Um, they can return the section when they're done. There's an option on the top of the paper for them to return that section. At the end, you can complete and distribute the paper. So everybody will get a copy of the paper at the end. Um, but toggling back to the paper, uh, let's look at the comments. So the comments are just tucked here. Um, and you can see we've color coded the different types of users. So this is blue for a collaborator and green for a reviewer. Um, they can leave comments. So when they highlight a section, uh, they can then add a comment and it'll be tied to that highlighted section. Um, in order to like really organize your comments, um, you can filter just by the user. So if I just wanna see what Helen's comments are, I can just uh, toggle just to Helen. I can show any resolved comments. So it will have a mark here that says I've taken care of that. Um, but I can also then just reply to reopen. Um, and then here, if I wanted to reply to this comment, I could just say, thank you. Um, I, I took your advice. And save and then um, if I want, I can tick the boxes here. I can delete the comments. Um, it's really, we've really tried to expand the commenting feature here. You can also uh, look here under my alerts when someone does leave a comment on a paper, um, it'll give you an alert and then you can toggle directly to that comment, um, which is really helpful, I think, uh, and just reminding you something has happened in academic writer in one of your papers and we want you to look at it. So just trying to help you in case you're in a paper and you forget um, to kind of review those comments from your reviewer. Does anyone have any questions about the commenting feature or the collaboration feature? I can pause for just a second because I talk so fast. Nothing in the chat or Q&A so far. Oh, great. Hopefully that means I'm doing a great job explaining it <laughs> and not that I'm talking too fast. Um, so I'm going to move on to talking about the tables, figures, footnotes, and appendices. Um, first, I kind of want to start with references. So when you think about the references, we we have this global list of your references. So these are your references that you have added to your library of references, which is great. We have a whole tab for that because references are utilized in pretty much every paper that you, you write. Um, but here we have, you can access your references here. You can add a reference um, 
either from your your references, a psych info. Um, this is just letting you add a reference to your paper. So if I click, I can just add to paper. Um, once I've added it to the paper, I can then add a citation. So if I click here, now I can see that I can cite this. And I want to make sure my, my cursor is in the correct spot within my paper, because once I click cite, it's going to drop that citation directly where my cursor is. Um, I'm going to untick that box. So when thinking about you have a library of references, you will also always have a library of tables and figures. So every time you add a table or figure to Academic Writer, you're adding it to your library of tables and figures. The, the only way to access that library, rather than having a tab up here that you can access for your reference library, your this library will be located in every paper that you create. Whether you need to use a table or a figure or not, you'll just toggle to my tables. And this is my global library of tables and figures that I have added to Academic Writer. This section is specific to tables. And then here, this is specific to figures. Um, so here you can see these are all of my figures that I've ever added to Academic Writer. Um, but then if I look here, these are the figures that I've added to my paper, which are none. To add that, I can just tick one from my library. I can immediately decide I wanna call this out or embed in the paper um, straight from here, or I can just add to paper and decide I wanna use that later. So now this is added to my paper figure list. To add a new figure, I can, can you let me click here, Academic Writer? Here we go. So to add a new paper, I can do this by importing or a new figure. I can do this by creating the figure or import images from Word or Excel. So this is where my internet got a little sticky earlier. So I'm gonna go for it. I'm gonna try um, select document. Oh good, it's working great. So here uh, for figures, you can import either um, through a Word document or an Excel document. So here I'm just gonna click this Excel document and it's going to start extracting the images for me. And it might take a minute um, depending on how many images you have available or if your internet is behaving, um, but those are all the options. So here you can see I've these are created as figures within that Excel document. So those are gonna be imported as an image. Um, so I think I have most of these in here, but I'm just gonna take this one and then begin import. So every time you add a figure or a table to your library, um, you have to immediately go in and verify the information um, because we're, we're only importing the figure, um, but you do need that title. So you can see I have this red exclamation point on all of my imported images. This is just my paper figure list. Um, so I would need to edit it. And then it's telling me immediately I need a title. Um, so this is dogs by day. And then once I save that, it will be fine. Um, one thing to note is that since this is a figure that has now been added to my library, any changes that I make to this figure or the information associated to it will also be applied anywhere this figure is used. So if I had added this figure to another paper and I make changes to it here specific to this paper, it is also changing it in that other paper. So that is something to be mindful of when you're working with your figures. Um, I haven't updated that one, but I'm gonna leave that for demonstration purposes. So this is now here, but it's also added to, oh, it has toggled me to the left-hand side navigation. So there is a difference between these, um, which I'll highlight right now. So in order to add a figure, to your paper or a table, 
you need to be working below the paper. So this is the only spot where you can specifically call out or embed a, a figure or a table. So if I add my call out here, it's gonna ask me if that's parenthetical or narrative. I'm gonna click submit because it's gonna be parenthetical. Um, and then my cursor is up here and you can see it says figure one. Um, it's going to change the numbering for me. So if I had had a, a figure here after the fact, it will update the numbering for them. I'll then have figure one and this one will be figure two. And as a preview, this has now been added to my paper, um, which if I toggle to the end, these are my references. I now have table one and I have figure one. Um, I did check with the style experts. So you do have the option to embed a table or a figure. So if I circle over here, Maybe I want this to be embedded within the paper. That, of course, is going to put it, you know, within the paper. So if I do this here, the style experts really recommend that if you are going to embed or put content at the end, you should stick with that method. You shouldn't alternate between them. So you should either embed them all or you should put them all at the end. It's not recommended to do both. So if I click submit here, it's creating the table call out. Um, and then this is the first time I have called this particular uh, table out. So it's going to embed it directly beneath. If I do uh, call it out again, it's only going to include, um, like if I embed it again, it's only going to include the reference to the table. So it's not gonna add it again. Um, it's going to refer you to the first time it was added. So once you add that table the first time and you embed it, that's where it's located. And then any additional time you embed it, it's only going to include the call out. It's not going to include the table itself because you've already added that to the paper. And that works the same for the figures also. Um, this is a lot of content. Uh, so with the tables, one thing I wanted to mention is how do you add the table to your paper? So this is a little bit different from figures. So when I click on that, I can it pushes me over here to where I'm managing my tables and figures. Um, I can either use the tables from my library or I can add a new table. Um, and you can create the table within Academic Writer or you can import the table from Word. Um, if I create the table, um, again, it's a form, it's guiding me through the process. So this is a required field because it needs a title. So this is my test table. And here I can format in title case because it's reminding me that the title of this should be in title case. So it's giving me that button similar to the references, the reference form that I can format that in title case. And then here I'm creating the table body. So it's, I can use this form. I can just select a section of them and then it will put it in here. So maybe I can start um, putting in my column headers and my rows and formatting my table. If I need to add a citation to the table for some reason, I can do that here, which is it's pretty handy, I think. And then underneath, I can add a note and it's gonna give me an explanation underneath of what you would put in. So if there's anything specific to your table, like symbols or something that you need to explain, you can put that in here. And again, when you click into specific note, um, it's again telling you what type of information might be included in that field. So we're trying to really guide you through the whole process, just reminders of like what you would be including. And if you are using probability, and I'm going to be honest, I have no idea what any of these mean, um, but we do have information in Academic Writer that can explain them. So if these apply to your table, you can select them here, or if you have your own probability note, you can add it below and then you would just click save. Since these aren't really required and I haven't formatted anything here, 
I could technically save this and it will give me this blank table and I can always go back and edit it later. But for now, I'm just gonna click cancel. Yes, thank you. So that's how you could add a table from within Academic Writer. Oh, did it not let me cancel? Close and return to body. Um, so again, as a rule, tables and figures can be called out by using the features below the paper editor. But when you are adding new tables or figures or managing them, you can use the left-hand navigation. Um, so I'm gonna close this out and let's talk a little bit about footnotes and appendices. So footnotes and appendices are both specific to your paper. You won't have a library the same you would for references, tables, and figures. So every footnote and appendice is going to be specific to that table. So every time um, you're adding one, you're going to do that within that specific paper. And again, you want to make sure your cursor is in the correct spot. Um, for the footnote, I believe it's right after the period. Feel free to drop in the chat if that's not where it goes. Um, I know APA style doesn't always recommend using footnotes. Um, so here I can just click on add new footnote, um, and it gives me a text box to add in that content. And if there is an additional citation within that footnote, um, you can add it here. So one thing to note though, is if you are citing a footnote, um, that reference that you're using for your footnote citation is then added to your, your reference list and included in the paper. Um, so footnotes are here and then appendices are also specific to the paper. So you won't have a library of appendices to use. You're gonna create those for every paper that you're using. So if I click here, oh no. Come on, my browser is trying to give me a hard time. Okay, I got it. Um, so when you click on this, it's gonna ask you what type of appendix is this? Is this a table or a figure or a text? Um, again, the appendix, um, it gives you a little explanation here of what you could include within that. So here, if I'm, I wanna use a table, I can then select the tables that have been added to my paper, which I guess uh, is not giving me that option. So if I select figure, this is the figure that I have added to the paper. So maybe I think that should be an appendix. Um, if it's not added to my paper from my library, um, because I wouldn't wanna add a figure that I've added to my paper or used within the paper in an appendix, you don't need to use them twice. I would then go back and add a figure from my figure library to the paper so that I can then use it in this appendix. So you first have to add a figure to your paper and then you can add it to your appendix. Um, if I click update here, it's creating the appendix for me. So now I can see um, if I close out of here, I have under my appendix, um, I can scroll down, I have added this. Um, and then if I wanna call it out, I can click call out and I can do parenthetical or narrative. Um, and then it, it dropped it in the title. So again, this is a great example of why you need to be specific where your cursor is when you're adding these to your paper. Um, but then if I leave it there, I can go to preview and I can just toggle to the back of the paper to see what my appendix looks like. So if I click 18, here's my appendix, dog by day, dogs by day. Um, does anyone have any questions? I know this is a lot of content kind of dealing with these objects and how you put them in the paper. Again, it's telling me that this is called out, which is great. Um, that is similar to the references. It's letting you know you've used this because if you don't use it, you need to make sure you take it off your paper. Any questions? Um, anything I can dive a little bit deeper into that maybe I didn't um, mention? And again, you can see I have the red exclamation point that 
I have not updated the title here. So that is really helpful to have. Okay, I'm going to toggle over to our check functionality. Um, just a quick recap though, um, to access your library of tables and figures, you would need to be within a paper and you would just toggle to my tables. Um, and the same here, if you wanna call out or embed a table or a figure or add a footnote or appendice, you're gonna do that from the section below the paper. Um, the left-hand navigation is more for management of these objects, for adding them to your, to your paper or for adding a new table or a figure. Um, so the check tools, I always recommend utilizing them with your paper. They're so helpful. Um, the Check My Writing is a report that you can run on your paper and it's an analysis of the content. So it's really kind of highlighting a few things that you might wanna go back in during the editing process. So for here, you know, your average reading level, um, we use the flush Kincaid scale um, to kind of check that. So here, I'm above the average reading level. So it's letting me know, hey, you really want to target it like maybe below 12. But for academic papers, I think it's fine to go a little bit above the average reading level. It just really depends on what your faculty or department is looking for. But that could be a handy tool. Um, and then it's also looking for cliches and redundancies in your report, in your paper. Here, I use the phrase red tape which I definitely meant to use, even though that was a, cl a cliche. So I'm fine with this. I can disregard this part of the report. But if I want to know a little bit more about this, I can always check here. A repeats check, I guess I did pretty good with that. I did not have a lot of repeated phrases. Um, my sentence variety, while I have a pretty good variety, I'm a 5.8 and you want to target for over three, my average sentence length is slightly too long. So this is an indication if I'm looking at this report that I'm probably a little wordy and that's typical of the way that I write. Um, I have too many words. So when I'm going back to revise my paper, this would let me know I, ne I need to take out a few words. This goes back to conciseness within EPA style, which we have an excellent quick guide on if you wanna kind of go through that. And here is a transition percentage. So you know, as you're moving through your paper, you want to kind of transition people from section to section. Um, this is letting me know that I did not use enough phrases. I'm not helping people through those transitions. And it is telling me the ones that I use. So here I can see regardless, um, if I wanna see my time transitions, it's gonna highlight it for me and I can toggle through them every time I've used them. So maybe I need a different word. Maybe I can spice it up a little and not just use when repeatedly. So that's one way I would take this report is that I'm not using enough uh, words for my transitions. I'm relying on just a couple of words. So this is just a little bit of what you can get from this report as you're analyzing your writing. You can kind of take these and apply them to your writing to kind of take it up just an extra notch. Um, and then you can check your headings order, which is really important. You don't want to jump from heading level one to like heading level three, which I have in my paper. So when I run the report, it immediately lets me know my related issues section has a red flag. So let me dive into that. If I click on details, this should be navigational. And for some reason, it's giving me a hard time. So here's my related issues section. To make this go away, I would just need to have my headings progress in the specific order. So all of my headings are level one, except for this one where I jump to a level three. If I change it to a heading level two, the red flag is gonna go away. So now I know my progression of headings is correct. So if I toggle down back to the check, I can check my unbalanced headings. So in APA style, um, if you use a heading level two or after, you have to have more than one of those headings. And here I only have a single heading level two. 
Um, for this to be accurate or balanced, I would need two sections that are a heading level two. Um, to fix this, again, I need to highlight the word. You would not believe how many times I just put my cursor and tried to change the heading level. You actually need to highlight the heading and then change it here. So if I bring this back up to heading level one, my red flag goes away and I can be assured that my headings are in order and balanced. Um, moving back to check. Um, the check references is actually something you can also do in the reference section. So when you're in the re reference section, you're adding your references to your library, you can check them for errors. This is meant to give you that second check functionality. Like this is your second chance. You've added these references to your paper. Um, you can check them again. So here I've got my exclamation point. Um, I think we can see it. this is just a title. I have no author information and I did not tick that box within the reference that says no author provided. Or if there is an author, it's not included here. I can see immediately this was imported. So it came in from an RAS file import and the author information wasn't included. So it's on me. I can toggle into the DOI really quickly to like check on that. Um, and see what the author information is to go ahead and fix that reference. Um, so that's just, you know, your second chance at checking your references. We wanna make sure that the paper that you're handing in is correct. So we're giving you these tools to kind of do those second chances. Um, and then again, every time you add a reference to your paper, um, you, that is being added to your reference list. So you're not responsible for building a reference list within writing your paper. Every time you add a reference to your paper here, it's being added to the reference list that we are building on the back end for you. So the match your reference citations is just that second chance to go through and double check that you have used all of your references as a citation. If you haven't, then you want to make sure you take those off your paper. So immediately you can see there's a red flag. We do highlight it. I cited this one, which is great, but just that second visual to let you catch anything maybe that you did not, you forgot to use in the paper. So this is just that, that double check before you turn it in to make sure you didn't overlook anything. And this is going to be the same for all of these. So if you added a table, but you didn't do it correctly, or it's going to add that flag. So it's going to be like, you have a table, but you didn't call it out, which is this one. And the same for figures. So if I do the match figure callouts, I can run now. This one is fine. Great. Every figure that I've added to my paper has been called out. So I'm good. And then the same for your appendix. Um, the check the word count is fairly robust. It runs a little report. It gives you a good recap of um, how many words you've used in the entire paper, and then it separates them by the paper body, keywords, sections, et cetera. So it gives you a quick analysis and it tells you how many references you've actually added to your paper. I actually didn't notice that until just now, but that is really helpful because when you're looking at your references, it's immediately um, section to 10 results per page. You can change that to 30 or 20 if you need to, but it's defaults to 10 and that's the same for all of them. So here, if I just wanted to see 30 of them below my paper, I can immediately do that. Um, so again, really important to kind of go through the check functionality um, because that's kind of your second chance. That's helping you make sure your paper adheres to these elements of the APA style. Um, we're running out a little bit of time and I just wanted to show you the settings options before I ask if there's any additional questions. So the font and line spacing here, you can check, um, you can edit those for the entire paper. Um, this is helpful if you're writing your dissertation here. Maybe you need to um, give yourself a little bit more spacing. Well, actually that's under page layout. 
I'm sorry. So here you can adjust your margins. Um, you can also adjust your page orientation. So in some cases, if you have a really large table and it's in portrait mode, but it is, you know, splitting it between papers, that's not a great way to present that table. Maybe you want to change that to landscape. Um, so you can always do that here. Um, and then some of the other settings are paper size, which you can change. I think this is legal um, or page numbers. You can change the section of those if that's something that your faculty is like, I really want these on the bottom right. Um, so it's just a great way to kind of edit some of the settings of your paper so you're not stuck in the default settings for that. And then to export, um, you can email it to yourself or anyone um that you want to have a copy of it so if you just want to email it to yourself you can do that and then you can also download the paper um you can download it as a word or a pdf and you can export your paper reference list um so here your options are a direct export to endnote or roughworks or you can just pull out an ras file of those or a text file Oh, that was a lot of content. I did a lot of talking. Does anybody have any questions that I can address about any of the content or even any content that I didn't address? Also, feel free to let me know if this was helpful. Um, we did a series of webinars in the fall, and I think a lot of people really wanted to see more information on some of these features, which is why we added the advanced features um, webinar. Um, yeah. Oh, great. Thanks, Heidi. I appreciate that. But yeah, um, we're at 11.55, so I can definitely hang out a little bit longer. Um, thank you, Kristen. I appreciate it. Um, I know sometimes working with tables and figures is difficult. We are gonna send out a copy of the webinar um, to everybody that registered. So you will be getting a copy of the recording. Yeah, I know I references and figures are definitely hard. I think there's a lot of information that goes along with them. So it's kind of been fun digging into them and learning more about how academic writer treats them. But it definitely was a lot of information. So everybody's gonna get a copy of the recording. Okay, I'm gonna stop the recording. Um, and again, um, just hang out for just a second more in case anybody has any additional questions. <laughs>